Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a material that can uncrush itself. I have here this metallic pen. Now watch what happens when I push this button though. You can see it's a smooth cylinder now, but push this and suddenly it becomes jagged and crushed everywhere. Look at this. But then release it, immediately goes back. Look at this, so cool. The way it's able to get crushed in this repeating pattern reminds me of when I crushed a steel pipe in my hydraulic press. It went like this. You can see that it folded down in this regular pattern here. There's actually been extensive research done in the folding of thin walled shape. The reason scientists are so interested in this phenomenon is because of how much energy it can absorb. For example, I have a children's toy here that's pretty fun to play with. What it has is it's corrugated a little bit, so it always bends in the same spot. So when you give it some force, it compresses back together and then you can elongate it. Get it like this. So this is similar to the crushing pipe in the hydraulic press. But look at the interesting property of this. So as I push down on this, the force is gonna go up, but then it's gonna start buckling. Notice how it can't go over around 700 gram force. But then once it's completely buckled, then it can keep going up higher. So as long as it's buckling, it can't go over some force threshold. So where could a maximum threshold force be useful? In vehicles. Modern vehicles have become so much safer now because they have specific crash zones that are meant to crumple. The reason they're meant to crumple is because when something crumples, it's able to absorb energy. So the occupants inside of it don't absorb the energy themselves. You can see in this picture here, there's a safety cell where the occupants are inside the car, and then there's the crumple zone. So the crumple zones are in the yellow here, and the safety zone is in the red. So these yellow zones in the car are supposed to crumple when they get in a wreck. They're not supposed to be rigid. So modern vehicles specifically use hollow structures so it can fold and absorb that energy and not get past some threshold force. So what's cool about these pens is that the folding on these is actually elastic deformation because it can pop right back and look exactly like it did before we crushed it. So how does this actually work? Well, let's open one up and see what it looks like inside. So when I push this button, you can see that the creases start from the bottom and then they move towards the top. And it stays that way and it feels pretty stable until you pop it back and then it looks like it did to begin with. Also, it seems I can get it to crush on its own by just pushing the two ends together. I can't push it any further than this though, and when I let it go, it pops back on its own. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. I'm gonna unscrew this end here. This just slides off. Huh, that's all it is. It looks like a metallic coated piece of plastic actually. So here's the cylinder. If you try to crush it normally, Whoa. So you can see where we deformed it. We went past the elastic limit. So this device is meant to not let it go past that elastic deformation point so that it doesn't leave any permanent creases in it. And then I can put it back on. You can still see a little of those creases, but it still works. How this is working is normally when you try to crush a cylinder like this, it doesn't exactly fold perfectly like we saw in the hydraulic press crushing pipe. Now a lot of that has to do with the instability in the ends of it, so the initial conditions of the crush. So what the pen does is support it on all sides of it, and then it gives it specific locations that it's going to start buckling. The pieces on the pen here initiate a pattern that propagates down. So you don't have to depend on the luck of the initial condition of getting the pattern just right. And then also it has these stops here so it can't go any further. So the most you can compress the pen is this much. But you can see that as I push down on it, even as it starts to buckle, so it goes up from 600s to 800s, 900s. 
So because this is in the elastic range, it means that the more I push on it, the more bends it has, the more force I have to put on it to do the next bend. That was unlike this one that wasn't an elastic deformation, and so it stayed the same force no matter how far I was pushing it. And before we end, I'd like to thank Mel Science for sponsoring this video. If you like watching my channel, then you'll love Mel Science Boxes. Mel is a subscription box service that provides you with your own science kit shipped monthly. They're designed by actual scientists and parents to give you an amazing box every time. I've used many of their kits in my own videos and with my own kids, and they're awesome. They provide you with everything you need for your experiments at home. Look how cool this projector is from the Mel STEM kits. So look at this, you can see my desk behind there. It's a mini projector of your own room. So if you want to check out Mel Science Kits yourself, they're offering a free box. If you want it, all you have to do is pay $5 for delivery and your box is free. So you can get your free box by clicking the link in my description or by using the promo code FREELAB at checkout. Also, this is a limited time offer that's only going to be available for one week. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.